Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a stair step card. And that is a really cool 3D card. You can see that pulled out and sitting up. And um, it's really simple construction. It's made from a half sheet of paper. And we'll start with our half sheet and our simply scored scoring tool. Okay. Simply scored scoring tool is about 12 by 12. It scores at 1 8 inch intervals and um, it features these nice little tabs that will help you um, kind of measure out where you are scoring. I know for me that it helps because sometimes when I'm cold away or somebody asks me a question, I look away and I look back and I score in the wrong place or cut in the wrong place. So it kind of idiot proofs it, which I kind of need. So I'm starting with my five and a half by eight and a half piece of paper. I don't have it mapped out for two inches, but I am pulling this line down at two inches. I'm going to turn it sideways, and these are all marked for the uh, side of the card. So I'm going to pull the two and a quarter inches to meet this two inch line. The four and a quarter is going to go all the way across. That's our folded in half card. The five and a half, six and a half, and seven and a quarter are all pulled to the um, two inch line. So we're going to start by folding this in half and opening it again and we're going to now cut from the first score line to the last score line. No further. And from here I'm going to use my personal trimmer and I'm going to mesh, match up that right there. And I'm going to pull that score line. I'm going to, sorry, pull the cut line from the beginning to the end, making sure I press really hard. Okay, and you can see I've got that cut just in the middle where I want it. So I'm going to start again. I'm folding over again and looking for my score lines. We want the uh, three score lines on the front to the right and your two inch side to the left. I'm going to open it slightly and separate this a little. Okay, this will help. We're going to start by pushing the first fold down. That's making a mountain fold. Second one will be a valley fold. Third one down. Fourth one up. Now the fourth one is that middle fold. So the middle fold is actually going to be the opposite of the two inch side. Bringing the last one back and here you go. Perfect stair step card. I'll give you a couple of tips on how I design with the stair step card. I have actually start with a uh, piece of three and a half inch cardstock because this side is three and a half inches. This is two for a total of five inches. I usually put a three and a half inch by uh, I don't have any idea what it is about four inches. Yeah, a four by three and a half inch piece of cardstock here, and stamp something and frame it on there. Okay. For example, for this, I have stamped the tree and I added a glimmer snowflake and that sits right there on that, um, that step. And the second step, I've actually taken a three and a half inch piece of paper and uh, stamped, I'm sorry, I had the wrong one, three and a half inch paper, I stamped the house and uh, glittered it and cut it edge to edge, making sure that it stayed three and a half inches wide. So you can see I kind of went edge to edge and then I added the glimmer paper and you can stick that on there. You can stick it all the way down, flush with the bottom or a little higher if you want to give it height. And uh, that is the second step in there. Now for the front, I've done for some paper saving, I worked with the fact that there is that score line here and you might not like the score line, you can uh, maybe figure out a way, if you're smarter than me, which probably wouldn't be hard, to get, you know, to score this without leaving that line. But what I do is I work with it. I took a three and a quarter inch long piece of designer paper, which is a lot less paper waste than cutting a whole five and a quarter inches of designer paper, or even worse, trying to make an L-shaped designer paper. So what I've done is it creates this border in here and you're framing effectively the designer paper with the brown paper. And I 
follow through on this side by the two inch being one and three quarter by four inch piece of paper and in this case I decided instead of designer paper I would just use white and um, use the texture folder and so you're using very little designer paper and therefore maximizing the amount that you get from it and one last thing I kind of want to mention is that um, for the house itself I use the uh, regular liquid glue that Stampin' Up! sells. It goes on white and if you, I don't know if you can see it stays dimensional. It actually is puffed up and I put some Dazzling Diamonds glitter on it and it stayed white and dimensional and it held obviously lots of glitter. <laughs> so um, the glimmer paper itself is very very cool. I had a lot of fun cutting those snowflakes and they were done, in case you missed it, with the uh, Northern Flurries um, decorative strip. And that is a special um, Sizzix die cut. It's very, very thin. And it does require its own platform and cutting pads, which you can also buy through Stampin' Up! and my website. Um, you only need to buy this once, and you can buy a number of different um, decorative strips. But the snowflakes are totally awesome, as you can see, and the glimmer paper makes them beautiful. Um, anyway, I'm happy to see what you guys do with your uh, your stair step card. And things variations on it is that you can instead of two inches down the side, you can do one inch on each side, and those same measurements in the middle will apply. I made this card. This was an exact opposite, actually. Um, if you cut and scored it the same way um, as I did the other one. Um, the only difference was is that I have the two inch side on here on the right and the three and a half inch side. Again, the back of it was uh, just a uh, framed piece in the three and a half by four. In the middle I did a die cut, uh, an oval die cut with a greeting and the Sizzix leaves on the front. Good luck and happy stamping!